Okay, here we have a budget 2000 GPD system. So basically, it's an RO system with a single membrane housing for 4040 size membrane. The 4040 size is the typical industrial uh, size membranes. And ideally, on an industrial unit, you would want a higher pressure feeding it. So this one is equipped with a multi stage pump. Then the overall concept of this unit is basically you would have some form of prefiltration. Basically, the prefiltration feeds into the unit. The supply goes through the high pressure pump, gets pressurized through the membrane, and then you control the product water to wastewater ratio of the, of the unit to determine um, the efficiency and the recovery rate of, of the system. The water flow of the system starts here at a pre-filter. This is literally just a sediment filter just to use to catch the largest dirt particles and say in case something goes wrong on your pre-filtration setup. Then um, the water comes out through here, goes to a low pressure switch, which is an adjustable low pressure switch. This low pressure switch um, is basically a safety mechanism to tell the pump not to turn on in case there's no water or not sufficient pressure in the water. Then it has a solenoid valve um, just to turn on and off the incoming water supply. Then from here, there, this is your one connection for the incoming pressure and for the pressure gauge. Then from here, it goes to the incoming side of the high pressure pump. It goes out the high pressure pump and then there's a split in two directions. Um, one to a valve which feeds back to the incoming side. It's a bit of a strange um, setup on these budget units that they chose to do it that way around. So you haven't actually got a valve to throttle the high pressure pump. So instead of throttling the high pressure pump, what you would do is you would send some of the high pressure water back into the, the source side of the high pressure pump um, to reduce the flow. Then it goes up here, up this pipe. Okay. Then your water from the high pressure pump enters the incoming side of the membrane. Then there's two routes here. This one is your product water for the membrane. Your TDS meter connects here, which measures the mineral content of your product water. And that goes through a flow meter on the front of the panel. And then here's a, a 20 mil, mil female connection for glue to connect your um, product water to. Then at the bottom, the, the outgoing side of the membrane goes is connected to another pressure um, gauge here. And then you've got two loops here, one for a solenoid, which is used to flush, flush the unit. And um, so if the mineral content starts creeping up, it, um, there's a button you can press to, to flush the unit. And then the other circuit here is your main circuit that you normally run through. And there's a valve here, which controls your amount of wastewater. Now on this unit, since you haven't got a throttle on the high pressure pump, the primary way to control your product to wastewater ratio is with, with this valve and then the valve off circulating back to the incoming side. So what you want to keep an eye on is make sure your pressure doesn't go too high. Ideally, try to not let it go over about 10 bar. And then um, your product water uh, to wastewater ratio for most waters, you want to start with two parts wastewater to one part product water. And you look at the scale on, on this flow meter here compared to the flow meter here on the front panel. And that's how you determine what your, your ratio is. Then after this flow meter, here you've got a 20 mil um, male PVC glue pipe, and that's where you'd connect your outgoing water from. Operating the unit's fairly simple. You've literally got a power button here, which controls your high pressure pump, and it's just turning it on and off. Then the only real variables you can change is the recirculation valve here on the high pressure pump to send um, water back to the incoming, in effect reducing your flow from the pump. And on this side here, the wastewater valve behind here, which controls how much water goes through to the, the wastewater side. So if you've got this, if you're busy setting this up, start out with a high wastewater ratio. So turn the wastewater valve all the way open and slowly start closing it until you start to get product water here. And then um, your feed pressure is your one that's connected here. That's your incoming pressure from uh, your pre-filters. If you find that the unit keeps tripping and this feed pressure gauge is dropping down below one bar when it's tripping, then you know 
problem is you're not getting enough water from your incoming supply. Two things you could look at. Either make sure you've got a sufficiently large pump to actually pump water through your um, through your pre-filters, or you can open the recirculating valve a bit more that you have more water going back through the pump because it might be that it's set um, to give too high of a flow of water through and your pre-filters can't keep up. Then the concentrate pressure is the one connected um, here at the back, and that is your um, basically your product water's pressurized system. So that's how much pressure have you got here in the membrane housing. So ideally, you don't really want to get that over about 10 bar. If you find that this thing is spiking up um, to really high pressure, that probably means that you've got your wastewater valve closed and you can damage um, the system and possibly blow up um, some of your pipe work in here. So that's also always a good idea. Start with the drain valve completely open and then let it run and slowly close it until you start to get see you're starting to get um, some flow coming through the system. So on these 4040 membranes, they're technically rated for about 250 liters an hour. And that's the, the rating of, of, of the system. These ratings are done on really an ideal water. It's typically done on at less than 50 parts per million water. So in most, most situations, you won't actually get quite that yield from it. What we found in practice is when you get close to about 200 parts per million, you're looking at about 180 liters. When you get getting close to about 500 parts per million, your um, yield drops off to around 100 liters. So, and that's with any RO system, it's just a factor of, um, of the mineral content. Now, certain mineral content, uh, RO system can deal with easier than others. So for your specific one, you're going to have to play around with it. And how you play around with it is you start closing this drain valve and seeing what you can get your product to wastewater ratio without your mineral content starting to increase. If you, say, set it to a one part product water, two parts wastewater, and you see your when it's the unit's running, your TDS is very nice and low. You can start to close it and decrease that ratio. And then if you get to a point where you find, ooh, while the system's running, your mineral content here keeps climbing and it's a continuous climb, then you know you've gone too far. Then you need to go a little bit back on, on that and give it a little bit more wastewater. And um, yeah, that's basically the operation of the unit. Power consumption-wise on this unit, we've on the big thing on the multi-stage pump to keep in mind here is that your peak input can go up to 2.3 kilowatt. So you just want to make sure you plug it in a, a, a breaker where you've got sufficient capacity for that. But it is a single-phase unit that's just connected on a three-pin plug. So it's nothing um, very complicated or fancy in terms of wiring that's needed here. Then for installing the actual Oro membrane, or if you need to change the membrane, what you basically want to look at is it's got a seal with a, a V-shaped shape to it. So there's one open side and one smooth side. The incoming water, which on this unit is the top, would always be towards the side that the V opens. So what we've done is we've put a little bit of Vaseline here. This um, end cap is tightened with a clamp. And then again, on the end cap here, just put a little bit of Vaseline on the seal surface and then okay, insert the membrane from the top. Okay. And then just push it in, preferably not with a hammer, or if, if it, you do need to use a bit more force, use something um, that is blunt and won't damage the plastic on the unit. Then we can insert the cap again. And take the clamp. Place the clamp. Make sure that it covers the bottom plastic ring and the top of the stainless, stainless steel housing. And then Tighten that. This one, you can make sure it's properly tightened because it um, can cause you a bit of headaches if you get a leak here. And then on the unions that connect to it, make sure that your rubber o-ring is in place. And then you can tighten your 
union that connects to the unit. Same thing on the other side. Let's check is that a ring in place? And like for example here, we that no, there it is, it is there. And then we tighten our union, just hand tighten, fairly tight, but hand tighten it. And then on the clamp, take two spanners and just tighten that in properly. And then when you've now got got the membrane done, what you would want to do is open your waist valve all the way or use the strong flush quite a few times because the membrane itself is actually in a preservative. So that preservative you'd want to flush out of the system before um, starting to use it. It'll um, wait to see it. It'll almost look like an oily layer on the wastewater. Or if you taste the water, you'll taste that it's got a bitter taste to it. So you want to keep flushing the unit until that bitter taste or that oily layer is gone. And then you can go back to your normal, um, normal usage settings.